Hey there, <laughs> welcome to my studio. If you don't know, my name is Erica and I work at the Southeast Steuben County Library in Corning, New York. While we're all home for COVID-19 pandemic, I wanted to bring a pre-scheduled program to your home um, if you're so inclined. Uh, so what are we doing today? We're making seed bombs and seed infused paper. Um, all to celebrate Earth Day. Today is Earth Day and it is the 50th celebration of Earth Day and one of the craziest I'd say. So while we're all studying from home and working from home and playing from home, um, I thought we'd do something fun together, a little creative uh, from one of my favorite places on Earth, which is my studio. And I feel really special to get to have you here I never thought I'd have a virtual visit like this, so thank you for being here. All right, so what do we need to get started? Um, seeds, right? Yes. Uh, let me note, we have a seed library at the Corning, at the Southeast Steuben County Library, and you can be a member when we're open. Right now we are closed to the public, um, but you can sign up for seeds and return seeds. We share seeds. Uh, we want them all organic and um, heirloom if possible. Um, but now that we're closed, we can't give them away and no one can sign up for them. So we've partnered with the Corning Community Food Pantry to share them with their clients. And we're really grateful for that partnership. So thanks, guys. Um, so seeds. I wanted to use flowers today. So I have some echinaceas from uh, Baker Creek heirloom seeds. So I'm not so heirloom organic phlox, petunias, a variety of wildflowers. These might be organic. Um, and some common milkweed. These were definitely shared by one of our members last year, or, mm -hmm, two years ago or so. Seeds are such a wonderful little packet of joy because you just throw them into the ground and with a little love and care, they pop up and give you something beautiful like edible or a flower for your gar for your yard, uh, for your table, hello. All right, so besides the seeds, we need to protect our surface. I have, I'm not sure if you can see at your angle, I have a little terry cloth towel, an old beach, beach towel that I've folded up several times to give me some layers, protect my surface also need some old some paper reduce reuse recycle for Earth Day I have some brown paper mm, you can use that can use some comics I actually like to use these for wrapping gifts so I'll save that for the side what I have a surplus of is all these shreds from my paper shredder mm. I see some plastic um, that are just the right size, I feel, for making a project like this. What we're going to do is get uh, macerate the, uh, your paper with water to become a fine pulp. Um, so you want to clean your, your paper. Oh, oops, I'm intermingling what I just took away. So you're making a fine paper pulp with water about double the amount of water as the amount of paper you've used. I hear my supervisor coming in, checking on the situation. She might approve. All right, so I got a little sidetracked in starting to clean the paper as I talked about what we're starting to gather. So all the supplies, we have the, the towel, our paper, which should be shredded. If you don't have a paper shredder, you can rip it, tear it in half, tear it in pieces. You want about half inch piece or pieces are smaller. Well, so my paper shredder <laughs> cuts up cards and uh, all these type of plastics as well. Um, so if yours does the same, you want to remove all that type of debris. You don't even, if you're using junk mail envelopes, you want to take away the address window because that won't really work well. 
with your seeds and soil. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have some pre-cleaned shredded paper. Printer paper, uh, newspaper, you name it, whatever you have on hand can, can do. You're just making a mush with this. And if you even left this overnight in double the amount of water, um, the next day it's going to be a mush for you. Aside from your paper, let's make sure I don't intermingle plastic again. You'll have some screen. So I have some old screening from my house and replacing windows last year. I'm also using as a little sorting bin. Can use a pre-stretch screen. Um, this is an old stretchy screen. You can find them inexpensive. You might even have them around the house. This is mine. I will use it. I'll just clean it off. Um, and you can see possibly some uh, remnants from my samples that I've made previously, which you'll see soon. All right, and then we need some molds, if you'd like. I have uh, this, if you can see, yeah, a little rose-shaped silicone mold, which I can also use as a holder for pre-made uh, bombs. Ice cube tray. If you want to get a shape, you don't have to. The silicone molds do shape really nice, really well, and um, take a nice impression. So you can play with that. And if you don't even want to use seeds, but you want to do something more like paper mache, that's wonderful. Okay, mesh sieve to drain and strain, and a bucket to collect all that liquid, which is right here. You're gonna have some warm water. Warm water will break down the material a lot faster than cold water. If you want to add color, you can use uh, food dye. You can also use um, tissue paper. So we have some red and blue today. The big heavy duty uh, worker today is our blender. So hopefully you have a blender at home and if you don't, you can skip this step and do, as I said before, soak your paper overnight and double the amount of water as paper. At least 24 hours, it, it'll be a mush in the next, in at least 24 hours. And you can work with the same process as you'll see soon. That's the slow maker way. This is the faster maker way. So I have a prepped, tightened blender all ready to go. What I need is that paper that I've cleaned ever so delicately <laughs> and a couple handfuls. It doesn't take too much paper, so don't feel like you need to have a whole book's worth to get a project like this accomplished. Oh, there might still be some plastic in there. Sometimes hand shredding is the best. Depends on how lazy you are. We're creative. All right, I think that's enough paper. Let's throw that to the side. And then we need our water. So as a handful or so of paper, you can see the level is right about there. And now I'll just add some water to, the, to top it off. As I said before, this is like double the amount. If you filled this jar all the way, it wouldn't hurt. It's just a different way. All right. Cover your vessel, and then you'll stir this on low for about 10 seconds. So let's go low. <laughs> First round, I'll give you a closer look. There's still particles and you don't want that. You want a very um, uniformed mixture here, like a smoothie. See, it's turned gray. It's not the prettiest smoothie. Let's stir this on high.
to puree. This will be about 20 to 30 seconds. And let's go. <laughs> is uh if it, you know you don't want to drink this as a smoothie let's call it a, a captured cloud a cloud of paper pulp so now that we've got our medium uh, our media prepared we have the methods so what do we want to do first I think less messy is to start with the bombs the nicest kind of bombs we can create in this world. They will grow beautiful plants and not hurt anyone, unless you're allergic to the plant, I guess. All right, so what I've been doing here is take my mesh sieve over my handy dandy bucket to collect the water and I pour gently an amount of that paper pulp. And I'm letting the water drain slowly. Let gravity take its course. You can stir or rotate the sieve to aid the process a little bit. And once most of the water liquid is removed, you can start to work with it. It's kind of like a very wet paste or dough. So, pretty plain too. We, didn't, we went for first round with no um, dye. So, there it is. Paper pulp. Pretty fun. If you've never done this before, do it. It's simple. Don't take all the stuff out. Wait for a warm day. Get a bucket. Throw some shredded paper in it. Just throw that right there so you can see it. Okay. And, um, you know, get your pulp the next day and see what you can make using these instructions. Or maybe you find something better out there on the internet world. All right. So I made my first little ball. Um, let's make a couple more. A couple balls, a couple presses into the silicone mold. Oh, this still has a little liquid. You can still press out with your fingers. Ball it up. I hope you're enjoying your time at home. I hope you are staying safe and sane protecting yourselves and staying kind. That's the best way to get through every day. All right, a few of those. Now I have some of my samples that I'll put to the side. We'll talk about samples later. Mm, we saw some already. So now I'm going to take this pulp and I can press it if you have one of these molds. Press it right inside to cover the whole surface area and uh, to the thickness that you prefer. This has um, about a half inch lip or wall to it, so you could create kind of a vessel as I tried to do with these samples previously. Let's show a little closer. I have some milkweed in there. Um, it's a lot more liquidy than I thought at first. But that's okay. It will dry in the sun. These things can all go out there or they could just sit in your rooms or your house for a few days on a, on a warm, on a windowsill when we're lucky enough to have sun in upstate New York. All right. So I covered the surface. Let's go a little faster here. Cover the surface of both of those. Give a little well so we can throw our seeds in in just a moment. Okay, 
Let's see, it's still a little liquidy. I've got a wonderful towel doing the job it is assigned to do. Collect the mess so my carpet doesn't. All right, well, let's put those to the side. I feel like I have something in my eye. And we can make a flat one as well. Let's plop this out right onto our pre-stretched screen. You can see it's just like a little pancake. I can press this with my hands, just like a dough, to the thickness I prefer. Sound effects are free, my friends. Okay, so I can get it really thin, but I don't want to either. I wanna see if maybe I can shape this and I don't know. Um, I just wanna see the effect versus um, what I'll show you in the next round. All right. Mm -hmm. I want you to see this. Well, okay, so that was more of our sculptural um, seed bombs, seed infused paper portion. I didn't include the um, the queen of the show seeds. So let's throw in some petunias on that little pancake that I just made. Are they in there? Let's make it a little better for flow. Do, do, do. Oh, they're so small. I love petunias. They're great for hanging baskets. So I might just put these, break these apart into some hanging baskets that are waiting for some love and color. Let's see, can you see those speckles? Yes, you can. Pretty. Now I can push them in so they infuse more into the paper. And I want to keep that speckled look, so if either I use it or I give it away, it's obvious that there are seeds in this paper. Okay, put that to the side. Let's see, oh, here is a uh, milkweed seed left over from my previous experiments. I'm going to curate this packet, this little... Um, Seed sculpture, seed paper sculpture, with some flox as well, flox seeds. Sprinkling in more than enough to get something to grow. Usually if I plant seeds for my garden in a little pot, I go two to three seeds. Um, I mean, they're precious to me and I did spend a lot of money on them. Or maybe I got them from the seed library. Um, but still, uh, when it's a vegetable seed, I take a lot more care in savoring them each season. But this is a bomb. Uh, some people say that they've never had success with them growing. I have, um, and it might be because I packed them a little bit more with seeds. One thing I haven't mentioned also is these are older seeds. These are from, they were packaged for 2017. They're three years old. You can't save seeds forever, although we'd love to. Some seeds do last longer, um, but they do have a shelf life. And, um, you know, this is more of an experiment and a game than uh, a guarantee that we're going to grow them. So extra seeds, the better. It's a bomb. So if we had a whole bunch growing out of it, beautiful. Okay, so <laughs> we I added a bunch in there and just to make sure everything stays. I'm gonna to try to just smush it down, make the seeds marry the paper pulp and be friends. Okay, so that's that portion. We'll set these to the side and grab some wild flowers for the balls that I just created. Same idea. I'm going to just like pinch a little hole or well, if you've ever made a pinch pot, that kind of idea with these little shapes. Something so you can wrap, basically hug your paper around the seed. <laughs> Let's 
see. These are bigger seeds. I can show you. Smush. Smush. I don't want to wrap them too well. I want people, if I give them as gifts, to know that there's something in there. Um, even though I'll likely make a tag to tell them. Set that aside. Same with the rest of these. No package. I feel like you could spend so many hours doing this. And there's um, you know, limitless possibilities on how you prepare them and create them. It can be really sculptural. Maybe you want this to be a cup. Leave it like that. We won't we won't make a bomb with this one. We already made a bomb. Okay, so there's a little cup. And I will make one more bomb with this. Okay, very crafty, very make paper mache feeling um, method. Another way is to feel like a real paper maker and you want to use your bucket as your vat. So we can take that excess paper pulp and toss it in here. But, oh, I don't have enough depth to do the pull that I want to show you. So we're going to make another bat. Scooch this over of paper. And we'll add color this time. Okay, make sure no more plastic. Oh, I did not do a good job in cleaning this, but I will do my best as I throw it in here. There's about one handful. <laughs> Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what you've been doing or what kind of crafts you'd like to see me do. Or if you have an idea for a class that you'd like to present for the library, I'd love to see it. Share our knowledge. It's the best time to do so. Okay. A little bit more paper. I feel like I want to add a bunch more. Just so we have enough depth to go dipping in to this vat with screen. If you see, I have this cute little make, let's hold that to the side, make paper book by Elizabeth Whitehouse, which is one of our fond library patrons who loves also to reduce, reuse, recycle, and I learned a lot from her uh, at one of our maker fairs several years ago. In that book, you learn the tools of paper making, where you need a vat, a mold and deckel, um, which would be similar to a stretch screen. Oh, look at all this stuff on top. Um, but I don't have a stretched screen that would fit in this shaped container. So I have a, a wing it method. And that's how I do a lot of my crafts. And that's the way you should too. When we're stuck like this and we have to reinvent, reinvent, please. Okay, so, oh, I added a lot, enough water, enough paper, but I want to add color. Ooh, that was my elbow. A little bit of tissue paper will go a long way. Let's shred this down. Bunch of tiny pieces. And because I'm feeling funky fresh, let's try some, two drops of blue food dye too. I don't want too much, I just want a hue. I don't want to drown it in color. Maybe if I weren't using seeds, I would put a lot more color in here. Okay, so here goes the noise. Hold your ears, everybody. <laughs> Yet. Uh, 
Just don't want to stay low. Oh. That's a lovely little violet shade. I'm not sure if you can see. I'll show you once we go high and puree. <laughs> Not the cleanest of my paper but you can see another cloud um, perhaps not showing you the best purple in the world but still fun I'll show you in my samples that I only used the paper the red paper and it was really effective to get a perfect little punch of pink mm -hmm. so for this process we don't need the um, strainer just pop off your pulp lid, toss it on in. There we go. And there's enough liquid for us to do some dips. Um, let's swoop over here. Toss this back into the supply bag. Here's a smaller screen. Okay, I'll cut this down. This is ancient screen. It feels yucky. It was on my windows forever. So now it has a new purpose to make paper. Keep that to the side. It's a little more love. Life. Okay, so I'm going to pretend like my hands are the frame and keep as much tension as possible once I dip down in there and come back out. It's a little awkward angle. Ooh. But there we go. It's kind of like a lint collector in your dryer. Can't hold it that long for that way for too long. I'm gonna hold it horizontally, but it does have a very lovely um, purple lavender hue. I hope you can see it. Purple's my favorite color, everybody. Okay, let's go again. She could see this, it's so pretty. Oop. Now, if we were in class together, I could give you a better angle or you could see over this bucket, but Getting that camera to the right precise angle for you to see everything here is the hardest. So I just advise you to play with this process. It's very simple. And when we resume to our regular program, we can do this again together. All right, so your surface of your paper won't be like super smooth, like coffee paper or newspaper. Um, this is handmade paper. It will have a wonderful ripple to it. This pull the paper with a little screen and vat will give you a thinner quality material than the pancake style that we made here and stretched out on our own. Um, but both have their own purposes and I'd love to know what you do with these. I've cut them up and pasted them onto cards as a, a very obvious heart. So plant your heart and know that I care about you in your yard. Very adorable ways to connect with your loved ones um, via snail mail which is probably most likely the only way I can hang out with my family versus FaceTime, I guess. Um, but I really like the snail mail stuff. It's fun and we want to protect our post office. So let's look at what happens if you leave. Oh, whoa, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's give some paper to the um, seeds to this paper. Let's 
well at the flower garden. And these are much bigger seeds than the petunias. So I'm making sure I press everything in there and hope it stays put. It's not guaranteed that the bigger seeds will stay where they should. Let's throw some echinacea onto the other. Echinacea and milkweed. Echinacea is one of my favorite teas. It always makes me feel better when I'm feeling ill. That's what I love about plants. They're, they're our first medicine besides our own you know, time. My body's amazing. It can heal itself with time. A little herbs. Some good veggies, good diet, rest. You know, you know the deal. Okay, there's our echinacea. Let's toss in the rest of the seed packet of milkweed. They're hiding. They don't want to come out. Boom. There we go. Press, 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 just so they, the wetness of the paper kind of creates a little glue around the seed. These are also bigger seeds, so it's not guaranteed that they'll stay, but they're staying for this demo. All right, so there's the process. Um, pretty easy, straightforward, um, quick. Minus some gathering, and you didn't have to put this camera and all that stuff together and learn this video stuff. But boy, I tell you, it's kind of fun. All right, so let's look at what, what we made yesterday. Here is that red tissue paper, paper, and this was my pancaked blob. A bunch of petunia seeds, really neat texture. It even, I'm not sure if you can pick it up, but it even pick up the texture of the screen. So that's stuff to consider that if you lay this on maybe bubble wrap or um, a surface that has texture, it will likely pick that up. Um, here's one that I just folded in half. I just wanted to show you the, the rigidity of this paper that it has sculptural qualities. Love to know what you make with this. If you make something inspired by this video, please let me know. There are our balls. <laughs> They're not very pleasing. They remind me of elementary school and spitballs with the straws. Um, here are my favorite. These are the roses from the silicone mold. So that's what you get. Pretty neat, right? I didn't have as much paper pulp when I made these, but they do, you know, if I could match it up, it has, has some depth. It's almost like a paper cookie. Hmm. Don't need it. And uh, the star of the show, I feel, because, you know, we were pretend professionals here. Here's that sample of the pulled paper, pretend mold and deco in a vat of paper pulp. This only had to sit out. I had uh, direct sun just a couple of hours. So the thicker stuff takes a f like 24 hours to dry, but this is, um, Durable, ready to roll. I can make a, a card with this. I can cut it up and collage with it. I can even write on this, which is pretty neat. Let's let's uh, give that a test. So I didn't put any seeds in that one. And here is a, a sample of what happens. I'm not sure if you saw, but the bigger seeds, a bulk of everything stayed on because I pressed it in, but a handful of seeds fell out. So I can save those in my bin and make a potpourri of surprise for another uh, paper bomb. All right, so just pull that off, save your supplies for another time, and get crafty with that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. I'd love to know what else you'd like to make or see done. In a couple weeks, we'll be doing some chunky knit um, planters. Uh, that should be fun. 
you have Sculpey clay at home, that's wonderful. If not, I'll give you a DIY recipe with some kitchen ingredients to make your own type of clay that we can work with. Otherwise, I hope you do something to honor Earth Day and honor yourselves. Let's remember self-care is the most important. Um, and again, um, not sure if I told you, creationstationary.com is our blog and we're stationary with an A, A-R-Y, because we're staying home. We want to stay safe and always stay kind. Peace, people.